The new Streamer X from Rode is a really interesting device for a number of reasons, not least because it is Rode's first foray into the world of video, as well as being an audio interface. It is, after all, a video capture device, and I'll talk about some of its capabilities there in a little while. Uh, but for me, it's also the positioning of this, because although it is called the Streamer X, and obviously, uh, you know, the live streaming market is going to be a huge uh, opportunity for it, um, it's also been aimed squarely at people who just want to level up their audio and video quality in Zoom and Teams meetings. And that's kind of one thing that, you know, I'm constantly on about on my channel and in the Take One Tech Academy as well is helping people to level up uh, their online appearance in their meetings um, and the way that they present themselves and their businesses online. And when I say that this has been aimed at, you know, partly that particular market, um, what I mean by that is, as we'll see in the settings, they've got some settings specifically for, you know, video calls. But also they've gone one step further with a really smart move in my mind, uh, which is to have some integration directly with applications like Keynote, PowerPoint and Google Slides, which means that, this could well be the one device that you have to give you that high quality video audio um, and also then actually control your presentation going into your meeting or your webinar. I know that there's people I've already spoken to who have been really considering this and I've certainly recommended it to some people who just want to either you know, take that initial step to get that high quality video or audio or even actually just simplify their setup. So I've spoken to people with Rodecasters who are saying, well, really, I've only got one mic uh, and all I'm using it for is to just get that high quality audio going into my Zoom meetings. So, you know, pairing it down to, uh, to something like this, which is a much simpler device in many respects, but still has all of the same onboard uh, processing power in terms of audio is a really smart move. So uh, I think there's gonna be a huge, uh, huge opportunity there in that particular segment. Anyway, this is my uh, first two weeks of using the device, so I'm going to share my opinions with it. Uh, I should have to say that uh, Rode did send me this device for a review, along with the PodMic USB and also the Rodecaster Duo, so I'll make separate videos about those. But this is not a paid video promotion, uh, and all of these views are just my own. As I say, my experience of using them for the past couple of weeks. I'm going to run through all of the actual hardware itself, and then I'll talk about the software. And when I talk about software, there are, in fact, two different pieces of Rode software that you can use with the Rodecaster, uh, sorry, the Stream X even, <laughs> uh, forget the device right, and uh, that is either Rode Central um, or also their Unify software. Now, at the moment, Unify is PC only, however, it is coming to the Mac, so I'll make a video all about Unify uh, when I've actually got that on my computer and operational, but for the time being, um, I'll just focus on Rode Central. Incidentally, the difference between those two is that Unify is going to give you uh, slightly more options in terms of audio routing uh, and the uh, way that you can use the device, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. I do suspect that for the most part, uh, most people will just be using this with Rode Central because it gives you the sort of easiest, uh, quickest setup and uh, less, least complications in terms of setup. But uh, let's start with the overall form factor. As you can see, it's a really nice uh, looking device. Uh, if you're familiar with the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is what I've been using as my primary audio interface um, for the past uh, 12 months or since it came out in fact um, then it's going to seem very familiar to you it's got a very familiar look and feel in terms of the you know the side view and so on some similar sort of design elements and also uh, when you take a look at all of the little dials and the little um, glowing buttons as well it's got the same sort of nice tactile feel to it as on the Rodecaster Pro 2 another thing that they've brought over from the Rodecaster Pro 2 is the quarter 20 inch socket or screw thread I should say on the back which means that you can mount it to things now I'm not suggesting you mount it to a selfie stick to be able to admire it <laughs> on a regular basis uh, but it does mean that you can mount it to things like if you want to just mount it up off your desk and um, this can be used as a standalone device um, you know you don't need to have it plugged into your computer you may have it plugged into a mobile device in which case you might have a you know a musical instrument plugged into it even and just have this mounted up on a stand uh, next to you so uh, having that extra mounting option is really nice I I've personally done that today uh, just so that I can uh, put it up here and have it mounted up here to be able to show you what all of the connectors do. So first off, we've got this Neutrik combo connector here. Uh, that means that you can connect either your XLR microphone uh, directly to that um, with an XLR cable, obviously. Um, and if this is a uh, condenser mic, then you're likely going to need phantom power. Um, it does have phantom power 48 volts uh, here. So you can just toggle this on and off by pressing the button. Um, but because it is a combo jack, it does mean that you can plug in a musical instrument as well. So if you've got a guitar, for example, uh, that can plug directly into the quarter inch um, socket there in the middle. Next to that, you've got your headphone socket. So that's going to go to your headphones, your in-ear monitors, whatever you're using to monitor your, uh, your mix. 
Next to that, they've also got a headset socket. So that's a 3.5mm jack. So if you are using something like the Rode NTH100M, uh, this is actually the NTH100, but the NT... H100M has got a boom mic attached to it as well. Um, so that means that you could be using that as your microphone uh, rather than or in addition to um, the, uh, the XLR microphone input. Uh, coming back to the top-down shot, and by the way, I'll talk about different mics a little bit later. Uh, coming down to the top-down shot then, we've got the HDMI in, and I should say that my uh, main camera that you're looking at right now is passing directly through the Streamer X and going into my video recording software, which is Ecamm Live. So uh, my HDMI from my camera is going straight in there, and that's what you're seeing right now. You will have noticed that there is, in fact, two HDMI sockets, and that's because, as well as the input, you've also got the through socket there. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you may need to use this, or three to my mind. Um, either you are a live streaming gamer and you want to have your gameplay running on one computer, then you're going to pass the HDMI out uh, that would normally go directly to your monitor, and you're going to pass it through here. So it would go in to the in socket, and then the through would go with an HDMI cable from there into your uh, monitor. So then you can actually just be watching your gameplay whilst it's being captured here on your streaming computer. And I'll talk about the specs specifically for the HDMI uh, inputs and throughputs and so on uh, in a little while. Uh, the other way that you might use this is actually just to use it as a monitor for your camera. So if you are recording uh, and you've got your camera coming into here, as I've got at the moment, you could technically just have a little field monitor or something like that plugged into that um, so that then you have that as a little monitor of your camera directly coming out of the Streamer X. The final way that I can see that you may want to use this, is, which is actually probably what I'm going to predominantly do with this, is to actually use this for a, a secondary computer um, passing in a presentation into your primary computer. When I'm giving webinars or, or de demonstrations in uh, Zoom meetings, for example, I'll often run my presentation or my demonstration on a second computer, uh, and then I want to bring that into the main uh, computer that's going into my meeting. So similar to the streaming scenario, really, um, but just capturing something different rather than gameplay, capturing your presentation uh, so that you can see it on a on a, uh, an actual external monitor um, but it is going into your uh, your primary computer so that's how I'm going to use that anyway. Uh, next off, we've got these uh, three USB sockets. Uh, the first one over here on the left is a power socket, and it is, as you can see, 5 volts, 3 amps. Um, now, if you are running this into a computer, actually, it can draw all the power it needs from the USB from your computer. So you can see here that I've got uh, just this USB 1. There is also a secondary USB, but I've just got this plugged into my computer over this USB 1 cable, and that is the one that is also powering the device. Uh, so when would you might need to use the power? Well, if you are using using it um, plugged into an external device like a, an external device, plugged into a device like a, <laughs> either a, a, a laptop, or sorry, a smartphone or a, uh, or a tablet if I can get my words out. Uh, so that's where you might use uh, the power there. Uh, but these two USB sockets you can use for a couple of things. So either you could have it connected to a primary computer and a secondary computer. You may want to have a, uh, you know, a tablet or a phone uh, connected into that second socket and have that going into your uh, computer. Maybe you're bringing somebody in over the phone or whatever. Um, or it may be that you have both of those um, sockets uh, attached directly to a single computer to just give you two separate channels um, there. And we'll have a look when we uh, start looking at the audio setup as to how you might uh, consider using that. But uh, personally, with the Rocaster Pro 2, for example, um, you there have two USB cables that give you actually three uh, separate USB channels, but I have them all going into the same uh, computer generally. So um, anyway, a few different options there, which we'll look at uh, in due course. Now, if we take a look at the actual um, buttons on the front, and I'll just come back to this uh, shot here, um, then you can see what we've got. There's, uh, first of all, two dials um, over there on the, uh, the left-hand side, and that is for your microphone and also for your headphones. And if you press the microphone dial in, uh, you'll notice that this little LED above is switching uh, from uh, basically these different inputs. So I mentioned before that you've got the XLR socket um, there that you can use for your, or indeed for an instrument, for your microphone microphone or for an instrument. Um, if you are using that phantom power and you click phantom power on, you'll see that there is an indicator there showing you that it is on. If I get this nice and straight. 
Um, then you can also uh, click to go to your headsets. If you are using that headset option, um, that is how you would get to that. But you'll notice there is a third light, and that is because, as well as those wired microphone options, you can also use this directly with either the Rode Wireless Go or the Rode Wireless Mies. And in fact, I should say Rode Wireless Go 2, the uh, latest version of those. And you can actually pair this directly with the, uh, with the transmitter, so you don't need the receiver in there at all. You can just have this paired directly. So if you want to have a wireless mic option that is a great uh, a great great little feature that they've uh, added in there now i should say that if you're using this with road central one of the limitations of road central is that you basically have to pick which of those input devices uh, you want to use however with unify you do get access to all three of them um, simultaneously potentially so um, this could then be something that you use with you know a instrument plugged in then you could have something wired into the headset potentially for uh, you know a microphone or maybe using that wireless option. So you've got some slightly more options there um, when it comes to the uh, Rode Central versus the Unify. Also then on here, next to that, you've got the uh, dial for the headphone. Um, and when you press that, what you're actually doing is muting the headphones. So that is to mute your headphones. Um, and down here, you've got a button with a microphone that is gonna mute your microphone. Um, now, you might notice this nice little glow around the outside of the uh, the dials, which is going to be familiar if you are used to the Rodecaster or have used the Rodecaster. But one thing that is different on these, because obviously there is no screen to give you any visual in terms of the levels, uh, but one thing that's different on these little illuminated rings is that as you turn them down, uh, you'll notice that the illumination uh, also turns down if I change it from... Uh, <laughs> Uh, muted. You can see there that that little blue glowing ring, as I turn that down, um, that would be the level in my headphones uh, would be uh, going down there. And same with the microphone. If I go to the mic input, uh, then this is going to be a level of the mic input. So it's nice that you have got that little visual, even though there is no, uh, no physical screen on it. Now, just below the headphones, then, is a similar button to the microphone, but this is to effectively turn off the camera. And why might you want to do that? Well, in gameplay, you probably won't, but if you're using this in a meeting platform, it's nice to be able to turn off your camera, just like I've done right now. Uh, press the red button again, and the camera will come back on. So... I don't know if you've been like me before in Zoom meetings or Teams meetings where you know, you're not really necessarily entirely sure if you are on or off camera because sometimes the controls can be a little bit small to see, especially if you are using a teleprompter. Um, so I can see that there's going to be a lot of people who will really like this to just know that, yes, they are muted or not muted, uh, and they've got that very clear indicator there of that. So next to this then, you've got the smart pads. And there are four smart pads here uh, with the same sort of functionality as you've got on the Rodecaster Pro 2. So these allow you to change uh, your voice, you know, add voice effects to it. Uh, you can assign uh, audio to it. So if you want to play a music bed or sound effects and things like that, you can assign those to these. Uh, they can also control MIDI devices as well. So uh, they can be used as a MIDI controller if you are using software that allows that on your computer. Um, you can also use it if you are using OBS or Ecamm Live um, to actually control the software itself. However, you do generally need to have some sort of um, intermediary application to do that. So for Ecamm Live, for example, which is what I use to make all of my videos and my live streams, there is a third party app called ELMC, Ecamm Live MIDI Controller. Um, and so in that case, you would be able to use these buttons then to switch your scenes, toggle overlays and, and whatever in Ecamm Live. Now, there's four smart pads, um, but you do have multiple pages of these, and you can scroll between them like this, um, and you can have up to 64 actions um, assigned to those. I do think that it might be a little bit tricky to keep track of those. Obviously, you can color code them, uh, but you'd have to uh, have some, uh, you know, very, <laughs> very good memory to remember what all of those different pages are and the different uh, color coding on those. But nevertheless, nice to see for those who need them that there is uh, plenty of options there. Uh, these smart pads, though, do sort of have a completely new um, use case though as we'll see in the software um, when used in this new presentation mode because then these are used for advancing your slides uh, you've also got them for putting up a blank slide or starting or ending your presentation so uh, when you are in this new presentation mode which I'll show you in a moment um, then this becomes your presentation uh, interface here so this is what I was talking about with uh, you know if you are looking to level up your audio and video and look more professional in online meetings uh, then here you go you can easily toggle on and off your audio and video and you can control your presentation from here too. So really great uh, to see that. All in all, the hardware, like I say, feels really solid, just the same as I've come to expect from other Rode products uh, and a really nice sort of feel and aesthetic to it and a, a nice form factor too. 
Let's then take a look at the software. And I mentioned before that we're talking specifically about Road Central. If you do come over to the Road Central app and open it up, uh, then you'll find that the uh, Streamer X is over here on the left hand side. Um, I will say that when you plug this in, um, I've spoken to a couple of people who have had um, some issues with the camera being recognized due to the fact that they're plugged into a dock. Now, with all of these devices, be it a Rodecaster or a uh, Stream Deck or you know any of these sort of peripherals that we use these days on our computers for streaming and the like, um, you'll generally see there somewhere that they'll always recommend plugging it directly into your computer. Um, what can happen is, you know, if you don't have the bandwidth over the, uh, you know, USB channel that your dock, for example, is going into, um, then it may sort of cause some issues. Um, in all of the cases where, or I say all of the cases, <laughs> the two cases of the people I've spoke to who have had one of these where it hasn't been uh, recognized or the camera hasn't been recognized, it has been the dock that has been the issue. And so just to plugging it out and plugging it into the computer has, uh, has, has solved that. So uh, in those cases, though, uh, once again, uh, when you have got it plugged into your computer, mine's, by the way, is plugged into a dock, so it, it's by no means all docks, I should say. Um, but in any case, once it is plugged in, then you'll see it show up in the left hand side. Uh, you may see a little indicator here to update the firmware. And I just mentioned that because I mentioned, mentioned that I've had this for two weeks. In that time, there have been a number of uh, firmware updates. So it's great to see that this is still under you know, ongoing active development as well. And indeed, Road Central's had a few updates specifically related to Stream X as well. But when you click into it, um, then you'll see something looking like this. And it's really nice that they've got this quick setup. Uh, section down at the bottom. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment though. I'll actually go on to the more familiar stuff first of all, which is the basic one, which is device configuration. This is just changing basically the brightness of the buttons. So it's show, changing the brightness up and down of those and the uh, the brightness of when they're on or off, so uh, or active or inactive. So that's what these two sliders are. That's when a button is basically in its inactive state, uh, and then this is the uh, the brightness when it is in its active state. Uh, and then you've got device information and uh, reset the device there. Going back then, we've got the uh, customized smart pads. And as I say, I'll cover this off because um, this is going to be very familiar if you are used to Rodecaster. Uh, what we've got in here is either you can add um, sound effects. If I click on one of these, um, or maybe this one. Uh, so this is just the air horn sound effect, um, but you can upload any file to this. It's got two gigabytes of online uh, of onboard storage. Um, so you can um, just upload your files and then they're stored on the device itself. As I say, you don't need Road Central or Unify Open to actually use the device. Um, so you can drag and drop that. You've got some options as to how you want that to behave. So whether you want it to be that whilst you hold the button down, it plays the audio. Uh, you can also have it so that it's one shot. You just hit it and it plays the uh, the audio uh, through to the end um, or the toggle is more likely if you've got sort of a music bed uh, some sort of you know longer music track uh, then you can use a toggle to toggle that on and off uh, then you've got some options for what happens whilst it's on do you want it to loop it the track uh, do you want it to uh, replay at the end uh, and then some different ones that you've got there for those uh, and you can always just drag and drop things onto here and you can also export the audio if you uh, need to take it off there at some point as well Next up, we've got the uh, audio effects. So if I click into one of these audio effects, I'll just choose this one. So the pitch up, there's a few different effects here, like the voice disguise, the robot, uh, megaphone, echo effect, and reverb. And then you've got the options of either momentary or latching. So latching being that uh, you press the button and then it has that effect enabled until you press the button again. Or momentary is just basically whilst you hold the button down, it's going to uh, apply that effect. Next up, we've got some uh, mixer actions. So if I just come over to a different page, uh, I'll come over to these mixer actions. Um, here, if you want to play a little beep sound to uh, censor yourself, if you're prone to <laughs> swearing on your live streams, or indeed in your Zoom or Teams meetings, uh, you can apply that there. Uh, there is fade in and out. So, uh, I mean, that's something that I use on my Rodecaster Pro 2 for my podcaster, uh, for my podcast, I should say, when I want to uh, fade in and out the, uh, the music. Uh, and then you can have it so that it excludes the microphone. So maybe you want the music to fade out um, and, you know, your, your microphone stay, um, you know, audible um, and then at the end maybe fade the music in towards the end so you've got a few options there and you can change the time that it takes to fade in and out um, ducking is where you are having uh, all of the other audio reduce in volume slightly as you talk you don't really get much control over how much that 
you know, ducking is applied there, the level that it applies to. Uh, but it is quite nice to just be able to press that and then, you know, everything else will go down whilst you are talking. Um, so that's typically something that you'll hear in radio, you know, when the announcer, when the DJ, I should say, <laughs> announcer is, uh, is going to talk over the top of music, it may well just drop it down a little bit behind that. Um, then you've got MIDI, and uh, that is what I was talking about before, where you would need to use some sort of MIDI controller. If you're using something like a, a, a door, a digital audio workstation, um, often they are, you know, I've got uh, integration for MIDI so that you can control different aspects of that. Um, or again, if you were going to control OBS or Ecamm Live, for example, uh, with some third party software, you could use uh, MIDI for that. The one that's really interesting to me, though, on here is this presentation mode. So if we click on presentation mode, um, what that does, if you click on the little information, it shows you uh, in more detail. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, the previous slide and next slide are assigned to these forward and backward arrows that you've got, which are ordinarily the sort of page turn arrows uh, for the uh, smart pads. Uh, then here, you've got this one for a uh, blank slide in white or blank slide in black. So if you just want to put a blank slide up on the, uh, the screen, uh, and then you've got close presentation and start presentation in there. Now, one thing to note, though, is that this is essentially just sending the keystrokes. And you can see here the mode. I selected Keynote because that's what I use. Uh, but you can also choose PowerPoint, uh, Google Slides on Mac or Google Slides on Windows. Uh, and what this is doing is it's just sending that particular keystroke. So the W, the arrow key um, or the B or the escape or whatever it is, it is sending those to that application. But the application does need to be active. So if you are using Keynote uh, in and along with a Zoom call, for example, and you've got Keynote running, but you're kind of clicked into Zoom, so Zoom is the active application, you just need to be aware that it's going to be sending these keystrokes at the moment um, to Zoom rather than you know always going to Keynote. There are a few ways uh, around that. So I use an application called Keyboard Maestro, so I can actually just program that to take these these inputs from this device only, uh, and then send that to a specific application. But just note that that uh, you know if you go into the chat in Zoom or whatever, um, then uh, then yeah, you may be pressing the little arrow or this one, and it's just literally typing the word uh, the letter W into your Zoom chat. So that's just something to be aware of. But nevertheless, you know, for for the majority of people giving you know a presentation or a webinar, likely they'll be in the presentation software anyway. Uh, so that is um, presentation mode. Um, now, I mentioned the camera as well, by the way. So here it does mention the disabled camera and so on. Um, and I've already shown you what that looks like. But in terms of that HDMI pass through, I should really talk about the specs a little bit of that, because obviously this is something that's quite important. <laughs> so the max input resolution that you've got into that HDMI in is uh, 4K 60 frames per second, um, 2K at 144 frames per second, or at 1080p HD at at 240 frames per second. So that's the input that it can physically take. Now, obviously, that's a really high uh, frame rate there. Um, but certainly for gamers, that is what is going to be important. They want to make sure that, you know, passing it through this device is not going to be reducing the frame rate that they're getting, you know, certainly on their monitor. However, it doesn't necessarily capture in those uh, frame rates, though. So let's take a look at this, which is the actual capture resolution. So it's 4K 30. So it means that you can pass through 4K 60, but it's going to be capturing just the uh, 4K 30. Then you've got 2K60, uh, HD at 120 or HD at 60 uh, for HDR. Uh, the other thing that I should mention is this variable refresh rate support, which I understand is important to uh, gamers, not so much to uh, little old me just uh, going into my Zoom and Teams meetings. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is there. So I just want to highlight it because I, I do appreciate that that is uh, more important to, uh, to some than others. Uh, we've got all the other specs in there as well. I will say in terms of the audio, it's got the same uh, revolution preamps as on the Procaster Pro 2. So if you are familiar with those, you'll know that those are low noise and high gain. And if you're used to using something like a, a cloud lifter or a FET head, so some microphones require this extra booster in line um, to, uh, you know, sort of boost up the gain on those uh, microphones, that's not necessary with uh, using the, uh, the Streamer X, just as it is not with the Rodecaster Pro 2 as well. So that's something that is uh, just worth noting. And in fact, they say that if you do use something like a cloud lifter or a fethead, it'll actually introduce more noise into the system. 
Now, coming back then, it feels like we've gone forward a bit before we come back, but let's go back to that, uh, that setup because having looked at the sort of device configuration and the smart pads, um, I just want to come back to here, which is the first thing that you're actually going to see uh, when you get to the device, which is related to audio setup. And it is either, you know, you're going to select whether this is going to be for streaming, for presentations, for video calls, or for gaming. And what that's changing is the audio routing. So what you'll see over here on the right-hand side is that along the top, we've got these uh, different options here. These are all these different inputs, I should say. So this is your microphone. And bear in mind that we've got those three options for microphone. Um, then this one is the audio from the smart pads. So if you are using the smart pads to play music or sound effects, that is what this is representing. Then you've got HDMI, and I've talked about there being four microphone inputs, but just bear in mind that HDMI can also pass audio as well. So if you are using your camera coming into this device, you may well have a camera that's plugged into your, uh, may have, well have a microphone, I should say, that's plugged into your microphone. Let me get my words straight, shall I? You may well have a microphone that is plugged into your camera that is then coming into this device. So technically, you could have four different uh, mics that are all coming into the, uh, the Streamer X. Uh, and then we've got these two USB channels, so USB 1 and 2, and those are those two sockets that we've got on the back. So then here on the left-hand side, we've got uh, either the mix or your monitor. So the mix being, you know, what's actually going out into your live stream, into your Zoom meeting or whatever. Um, and the monitor mix here, the one with the headphones, that's what you're actually hearing. So it may well be that you want to have something different going out onto your live stream versus what you're listening to. Uh, for example, if you've got gameplay, you may want that, uh, you know, at a different level uh, in your ears versus uh, in the live stream. So that's what those different inputs are and the outputs. So what you'll see now is as I change from streaming to presentation, uh, when in presentation mode, it is going to turn off those uh, smart pads because as I mentioned, when you switch into presentation mode, it kind of takes over um, those smart pads. And incidentally, when you are in presentation mode, if I just come back to my top down shot, you'll notice that these all turn this, uh, so it's actually a very light blue color. It looks a bit white on the screen actually. But if I turn out of presentation mode, we get those uh, colored buttons back, uh, but turning presentation mode on, um, you see that they all turn white. So that's kind of like just a visual cue as to uh, you know, the fact that you are in that presentation mode. Now, coming back over to the uh, Rode Central, though, um, I can also turn on and off presentation mode here. Um, so previously, we were doing that in the uh, smart pads section, but you do also get it here. So, you know, the first thing that people see when they're coming in is this quick start guide and presentation. You can toggle it on and off from there, too. Next up, if I go to video call, you'll see that it has changed the routing slightly again. So uh, first off, it has uh, disabled the HDMI audio. Uh, so that means that uh, no audio is coming over HDMI. Um, but then they've also toggled off here um, the USB 1 audio. So if you think about the way that this would be set up, you're going to have your um, Streamer X audio as an input and an output on your computer because you can feed stuff into this. This is a audio hub that stuff is coming into, audio is coming into and then being distributed to your headphones and to you know these different USB channels. Um, so it is both an input and an output. So if you're using this with Zoom, um, then you would have the Stream X set to both your mic and also your headphones. Uh, obviously, your actual mic is going through this and into Zoom, and Zoom is then feeding the audio from your Zoom meeting into the Stream X and then through the headphones into your, into your ears. Well, what you don't want is for the audience uh, or your other meeting participants even in Zoom um, getting what they call slap back, and they, they would all call it echo, where they can hear them back a moment later and normally we have a feature called mix minus uh, to combat that so that's what we've got on the Rodecaster Pro 2 um, and that's the term whereby uh, mix minus means that you're taking whatever audio is coming in down a specific channel uh, and if you've got mix minus on it will remove that audio from the mix that is going back down that channel um, and that's in effect what they've done here so having the USB 1 uh, audio toggled off in the USB 1 audio going back because that's what is coming out of the uh, the mix here um, then that means that your people in zoom won't be able to hear themselves back they won't hear this echo this slap back however you still will be able to hear them because you can see the little green check marks means that uh, you are hearing everything that's coming in over usb They've also then got the USB toggled off for both of those. Now, I will say this is just a generic setup. 
it may well be that for your Zoom meeting, you actually do want, uh, you know, some audio coming from your secondary computer, for example, uh, and maybe even going into that USB one. So uh, it may well be that you want that active. It just depends. Um, and the same also with your HDMI. I've mentioned that, you know, you can pass audio over HDMI. And if you're using a secondary computer and you want it to go into your Zoom meeting, that may well be something that you want to have checked on. However, we can uh, set a custom setup for this, as you can see just down here, and we'll look at how to do that in a moment. So just know that these are, you know, fairly generic setups. However, it is great as a, uh, you know, initial startup uh, setup process for people. Next, you've got gaming, and what this has done is turned off the um, the mix from HDMI. Uh, so this is assuming that you're using this for gaming. You've got your gameplay audio passing over HDMI. Maybe you don't want that to go into the stream, but you want to hear it. Uh, and once again, that uh, sort of mix minus effect that they've got going on here as well. Um, I will mention, though, that if you are using this for streaming uh, and you've got streaming toggled on here, if you are using this with your camera as a streaming camera, it may well be that you don't actually want this HDMI on at all because if you've got a decent mic plugged into your uh, Streamer X, and so you've got that's your mic audio. If you've got your camera plugged in here, um, you don't necessarily want just the built-in camera on your, uh, the built-in mic on your camera passing the audio through. So you can tweak all of this to your exact specification and liking. And if you click on custom, it will take you through to how to do that. But you can also access that directly just from clicking on this audio setup just up here. So if you click on audio setup, now we can see a slightly more advanced version of that routing table that we were just looking at. Um, and you can also see those different options for streaming, for presentation, for video call. And perhaps you can see as I click through them what it's doing. It's actually, we've actually got separate faders um, here for all of those different things. We've got our mic here, but now instead of just a single mic icon as we had in that table, you've now got those three mics. And in fact, if I press the Stream X button, you'll see how it does toggle through uh, which one is the selected microphone. Um, and then over here you've got the uh, sound pads or the smart pads the audio from the smart pads the hdmi the usb1 and usb2 but as i say it's not just showing you the tick whether it's on or off uh, we've actually got individual faders um, for each one and we've got dual faders because we've got the uh, the mix and then we've also got the uh, the monitor uh, out there as well so you can adjust these um like together, like this, just move it up or down. Uh, there's also a little link icon at the top here. If you break the link, then you could maybe set a lower level for your smart pads over here. Maybe you want to have a, uh, you know, turn off the HDMI completely uh, for, your, uh, for your stream, but keep it up in your monitors. Uh, and as you can see, just make complete changes there. So when you do make any changes to this, it's gonna revert to this uh, custom setup. At the moment, you can't actually save these, which is, um, I think it would be nice to be able to have some different setups that you might want to have uh, saved. At the moment, if I click into any one of these others, it will pop up a warning to say that we're gonna clear the custom mix. So if I click on continue, uh, now you can see we can just go back to any one of those. But if I go back to custom, it basically just leaves everything exactly as it was on the, you know, the last setting, whether it was streaming, presentation, or video call. So if I change to video call here, uh, as you'll see, it's made these changes. Now click back to custom. It just leaves it exactly as it was. So it would be nice to see some presets where you could potentially save some presets. Nevertheless, really nice to have this audio routing and there's lots of ways that you could uh, do this. You know, as I say, if you had got both the USB one and two plugged into the same computer, uh, then it gives you slightly more control over that. And obviously in your computer, you could decide, you know, what audio goes where as well. But Unify is certainly going to give us a lot more advanced uh, audio than that. Um, now, I should say that for the whole of this uh, video, my uh, my audio has just been passing through my Rodecaster Pro 2 because of all these different changes I'm going to be making, tweaking everything on and off. However, I will say that the preamps that you've got in the Streamer X are exactly the same as we have got in the Rodecaster Pro 2. And that means that if you click into the settings here on the uh, on the microphone, um, then that gives you access to all of their uh, on onboard processing. And that is really the sort of heart of this. That's what you're going to be getting this device for. Um, whatever mic you've got, you know, it's all about how you apply that processing to it. And so when you click in the little cog icon there um, to go and make these little tweaks and adjustments, uh, you start off, you can adjust the input gain there. Uh, you can also toggle on and off the phantom power directly from within here as well. 
And then also, if you are using that Neutrik combo uh, um, socket there for an instrument, then you can toggle this on and off for an instrument. Now, they do have some uh, really sort of, I say, I say basic processing. <laughs> it's a basic interface for some really complex processing. But they've got what they call VoxLab, which it has got these three different sliders here, or three different dials. You just click into one of them and rotate uh, your scroll wheel here um, on your mouse uh, to turn that up and down. Uh, depth is going to add that sort of lower end um, uh, depth to your, your sound. Uh, sparkle adds more sort of higher end clarity. And uh, Punch is going to you know, also add some elements to the, uh, the sound. But what all of these are doing, though, is effectively tweaking their advanced settings. And just as on the Rodecaster Pro 2, you can go into the advanced settings here. And from there, you've got all of these different um, onboard processors. So the first one is a high-pass filter. Um, that is going to be used to uh, potentially knock out any low-end noise, uh, for example, from uh, you know road noise or an air conditioning unit or something like that. Uh, and you can adjust the uh, frequencies and so on there. And I'll talk about some of these different uh, elements in here in terms of what all these settings do in a little while. Next, you've got a de which is to remove those S sounds <laughs> from your voice. And you can target specific frequencies to do that. Um, and then you have a noise gate. So this is going to be for when you, depending on how you're using the device, like for me, I have my noise gate set so that when I stop talking, basically no audio comes through. And that's how it goes completely silent when I stop talking. However, you may want to have this set up slightly differently, but it basically just eliminates, uh, you know, background noise that's gonna come through whilst you uh, don't necessarily want the mic sort of open as it were. Next, you've got the compressor. Um, this is going to basically help to level out the audio in terms of the volume. Um, so bring down the you know, higher volumes in your, in your voice, um, but then potentially also boost up the lower volumes to just make everything a little bit more equal. Uh, next, you've got the equalizer, which is uh, actually to add, you know, different elements to the high end, the mid end or the low end. And you can see that that is the three different things you can uh, adjust there and you can adjust exactly, you know, what frequencies these are affecting um, by adjusting this way. And there's uh, a few other ways that you can adjust this. And double clicking on this will actually open up some uh, further control there. So you're adjusting effectively the, uh, the the range of frequencies that are being affected by that uh, and then you can move those things up and down like that again i'll talk about these in a little bit more detail um, then you've got the uh, big bottom and the aural exciter and these um, are essentially adding either a more sort of richness to the lower end tones in your voice or the aural exciter is adding more uh, more of that sort of clarity and sparkle <laughs> in the, the higher ends. Um, and then we've finally got the panning. Now, I've always found with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and with uh, this and also with the Rodecaster Duo as well, that these things here are really the secret to adding some extra, um, you know, polish, I would say, to your sound. Um, and yet, when people go in and try to make adjustments to these, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, sort of unfamiliar terms here. So what exactly is threshold, attack, hold, and release, for example. So I did cover all of this in a recent live stream where I went through all of these and you know gave some introduction into exactly what they're doing. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Overall then, I think that this is a great little device if you are looking to really level up your audio and video quality going into uh, either your live streams or your recorded videos using Ecamm Live or OBS, um, or obviously for leveling up your audio and video and your presentations in your Zoom and Teams meeting. Now, uh, I've talked so far about the audio using Rode Central. Uh, once again, when Unify comes out, I'll make a separate video about that. That is going to give us some slightly more advanced audio routing that uh, certainly is something that I'm uh, quite interested in as well. Now, when it comes to those advanced audio settings, I did mention that live stream. So do check out that video if you want to learn more about how to get the most out of the Streamer X, the Rodecaster Duo, or the Rodecaster Pro 2 when it comes to that advanced Apex processing uh, that these Rode devices have. I hope this has been useful, and I'll see you soon in another video.